Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews. My name is John, and in this episode, we will be reviewing the arcade classic, Solomon's Key. Solomon's Key is an action puzzle game that was developed by Tecmo in 1986. You ever had that one friend that had that one NES game that only he had and nobody else ever heard of? Well, in this case, that would have been Solomon's Key. I would come over and he was always playing it, and for good reason too, because the game is pretty fun and addicting, despite its obscurity. Even the arcade game is pretty rare. This is in stark contrast with with Europe and Japan's reception of the game where it sold over a half a million copies. Now I have a theory about why that is. It's only a theory though so take it with a grain of salt. As stated earlier, the game is pretty cool and there was no shortage of promotion for the game when you look at the overseas market compared to that of the US. And it probably has a lot to do with the Solomon's key in the game which can be a reference to the key of Solomon which is a grimoire falsely attributed to the biblical King Solomon. Why it's falsely attributed is because in the book there was references to Jesus Christ who lived about 900 years later than Solomon. Scholars estimate the date of the manuscripts to be around 14th to 15th century. The book features a bunch of pentacles, spells, and chants to summon up spirits, demons, and stuff of that nature to do the summoner's bidding, go invisible, find love, and so on and so forth. The thing is that the majority of Americans identify with Judeo-Christian ethics, and anything that may be perceived as pagan, heretical, or just the use of religious iconography can be somewhat controversial. So promoting a game which uses any of these elements will be slightly problematic, especially in the 80s. But I think over the years, they kind of loosened up a bit, or maybe they just know how to hide it better, allegorically speaking. Anyway, if you're curious about the Key of Solomon, you can always buy it on Amazon for like 20 bucks. In this game, you play as Dana, a sorcerer sent to restore peace back in the world by rescuing the Princess of Fairies and retrieving Solomon's Key. There are about 50 Zodiac themed rooms in which you must first obtain a key that would open a door that would lead to the next stage. But as you can already see, the challenge is getting to the key and to the door. At your disposal, you have a magic wand that can summon and break blocks. You can also break blocks by hitting them with your head twice. There are aids that can help you along like fireballs and if you collect 10 fairies you get a free man. The game gets pretty hard pretty fast. The first couple of stages feel pretty easy but then you'll get to that stage where you just feel utterly stuck. Even nowadays when you have unlimited continues I still find the game pretty challenging. Solomon's Key was ported over to the NES, Commodore 64, the Amiga, ZX Spectrum, Amstrad CPC, Sega Master System, TurboGrafx-16, 3DS, the Wii and the Switch. Again the arcade game was pretty rare and even according to developer Michitaka Tsurada, it wasn't popular as a coin-op. This is quite possibly due to a number of factors, difficulty included. However, the ports did manage to garner a bit of a cult following over here in the states, especially the NES version. If you're interested in watching or reading any of Tsurada's interviews, I'll provide links in the description and I say, play the game, let me know what you think. 